and we'll stand and face Jerusalem. Thou art near, O Lord. Thou art near, O Lord. And all thy commandments are truth. And all thy commandments are truth. Concerning thy testimonies. Concerning thy testimony. I have known of old that thou hast found of them forever. But then known for old that thou hast found of them forever. Consider my affliction. Consider my affliction. And deliver me. And deliver me. For I do not forget thy law. For I do not forget thy law. Plead my cause. Plead my cause. And deliver me. And deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Quicken me according to thy word. Salvation is far from the wicked. Salvation is far from the wicked. For they seek not thy statutes. For they seek not thy statutes. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are my persecutors and my enemies. Many are my persecutors and my enemies. Yet do I not decline from thy testimony. Yet do I not decline from thy testimony. I beheld the transgressors. I beheld the transgressors. And was grieved. And was grieved. Because they, they kept not thy Thy word because they kept not thy word consider how I love thy precepts consider how I love thy precepts quicken me O Lord quicken me O Lord according to thy loving kindness according to thy loving kindness thy word is true from the beginning thy word is true from the beginning and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever our scriptural reading came from Psalms 119 verses 151 through 160 May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and doing of his words. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank uh, Brother Steve for the reading of the scriptures. And I just want to uh, say, too, you know, for any visitors we may have or new people, there's a reason why we face Jerusalem when we open up. It is written in the scripture. I won't bother going into it, but there is a reason. The Lord said that we should face Jerusalem, and that is why we do that. We don't face the east. We face Jerusalem. Uh, one day in a lesson sometime, we'll show you that. And I want to say good afternoon to everybody. Welcome everybody here to the house of Jacob. Uh, Brother Steve gave you the title of the day's lesson. Again, it is a doctrine that Paul taught. What we are going to do in this lesson, we're going to uh, clear up some of the writings of Paul because everybody when they get ready to mess you up. And that's what they're doing. They might not realize it, but that's what they're doing. When they get ready to mess you up, they always run over into the writings of Paul. Because Paul's writing, the way he wrote stuff, you know, it's, it can be misinterpreted or it can be very easily twisted to mean one thing when actually it does not mean that. So that is why from time to time I like to deal with the writings of Paul because I know that's what people are going to use to mess you up. And, you know, the Lord even had Peter uh, make a statement about the writings of Paul. He said that the writings of Paul is hard to be understood. And people that are unlearned in the scripture, they would twist Paul's writing even as they would other scriptures but to their own destruction. So they, they do twist this right. You know, the Lord would not have had that statement put in the Bible if that was not the case. And I know from experience that that is the case. Because every time, and most, and most of the time, it's something to try and get around God's commandments. And every time they get ready to try and circumvent the Lord's commandments, you can count on them writing, uh, uh, running into the writings of Paul. You can count on that. Guaranteed every time that's where they're going. But we're going to deal with, uh, we going to deal with some of it and, uh, and just show you uh, what Paul is really talking about here and show you that Paul was in line with all of the rest of the apostles. He was in line with Jesus. He was in line with the prophets because they even go so far as to tell you that, you know, Paul came up with something entirely different. They like to use the term dispensation. That's the term they like to use. That we are under the dispensation of Paul. Well dispensation just simply means stewardship. And stewardship means that when you are in charge of something that belongs to somebody else. 
but they like to use that term whenever they try and deal with the writings of Paul. You know, we are under the dispensation of Paul. If Paul had a stewardship and Paul was stood of, over the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's what he was stood over. Now, let's start this lesson out, first of all, in Mark chapter 1. And I'm going to show you the message that Jesus came with, because Paul even told you that he was a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he said he was. You know, everybody want to tell you about what he is. We're going to allow him to tell us today <laughs> what he is and what he deal with. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to just read the book. Because when they try to tell you, they got about three verses out of the writings of Paul that they're going to deal with. That's about it. You know, they got a verse in Romans, the sixth chapter. They got a verse two in Galatians. And they maybe got a, a, a verse in uh, Colossians. And that's about it. But they claim that they are dealing with the writings of Paul. Well, man, you're only dealing with three or four verses. Come on. If you're going to deal with the writings of Paul, then deal with the writings of Paul. I know he wrote more than three or four verses. Amen. He wrote, he, he got several books in here. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So now we're going to deal with it here. But first, we're going to show you the message that Jesus came with because, as I said, Paul said he is a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 1, and we we'll began reading at verse 14. Mark 1, and start reading at verse 14. Go ahead and read, bro. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now that is the message that Jesus came with. And this is when he uh, began his ministry, by the way. Other scriptures tell you, you know, he had just gotten baptized and he had been endowed with the Holy Spirit. And he's uh, uh, just uh, beginning his mi uh, ministry here. And it said, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. That is what he came preaching, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read a little bit more. And saying, mm -hmm. the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh -huh. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now he said the time is fulfilled. He said the kingdom is at hand and repent ye and believe this gospel. So now that is the message that Jesus came with. And Paul, if he is a, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then that means that that his message would be the message of the kingdom of God as well. And we're going to find out that truly is the case. But first, let's go over to Matthew chapter 10. And uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Now, Jesus set the protocol when he came with the message of the kingdom of God. Can't nobody breach it. Peter can't breach it. Paul can't breach it. Can't nobody breach it. You understand what I'm That's saying? Right. He set the protocol right there of the message that should be taught. And that is the same message, by the way, that is supposed to be taught today. And that is the gospel of the kingdom of God because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, when they asked him what would be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world, he said the gospel of the kingdom must be preached into all the world and then shall the end come. So now, the, so now that, is the, that is the message that Jesus came with and that is even the message for today. The message still is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, uh, 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 Jesus is about to uh, uh, send out his 12 here. And Paul was not included. Paul uh, was a Johnny come late. You know, he came along later. You understand what I'm saying? He was not a part of the original apostles. Now, Jesus is about to commission the 12 here. And I'm going to show you the message that he gave to them. Start reading at Matthew chapter 10 and began reading at verse 5. Matthew 10, pick it up at verse 5. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Wait a minute, what, at verse 5? 7. Said I said 7. seven? Yes, okay, sir. I'm sorry, verse 5. Okay. 10 and 5. Go ahead and read. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Uh-huh. Go not into the way of the Gentiles, uh -huh. and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Now he says to the twelve here, he said, now he's telling them, you know, and Peter was included, <coughs> excuse me, among these twelve. Now he said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles, and any uh, city of the Samaritans, enter not. Because, you know, he's going to deal with Israel here first. 
It is just that simple. And later on, he's going to bring it to the Gentile. Lord had a plan as to how he was going to do this. You know, first I'm going to give it to Israel, and then from there, I'm going to give it to the Gentiles. So now he's telling the 12 here. He said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles, and any city of, of the Samaritans, don't enter there in two. Go ahead and read on. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh -huh. Now he said, rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go ahead and read. And as ye go, preach, saying, uh -huh. the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now he said, and as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So now, he, Jesus came with the message of the kingdom of God. Then he sent out the twelve, and he gave them the very same message. Let's go now to uh, 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 Acts chapter 9, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Now Paul is about to come into the church. And we're going to find out he's going to fall right in line with the rest. He gave, Jesus had the gospel of the kingdom. He gave it to the twelve. Now, Paul is about to come into the church now. Because originally, Paul was not one of the original apostles. He was a Pharisee. And they opposed the church. Even so much that they persecuted them even unto death. And Paul had a hand in it too. Let's start reading here now at uh, Acts chapter 9 and begin reading at verse 1. 9 and 1. Go ahead and read, bro. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, mm -hmm. went into the high priest. Now this Saul, this is Paul. You know, his, his name was changed from Saul to Paul. He said, now and Saul, he was breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord and went unto the high priest. Now, you see what he was doing, right? He was totally opposed to the apostles and the message that they had. Go ahead and read on. And desired of him letters to Damascus, mm -hmm. to the synagogues. Go ahead. That if he found any of his, if he found any of his this way, mm -hmm. whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. See what they say? He did, you know, he went unto the high priest and desired on them letters. And he said, if he find any of this way, it don't matter if a man or a woman. Bound them up and bring them back to Jerusalem. Because this message we will not allow. You know, this message about Jesus and the kingdom and all of that. No. If you find any of this way, whether they are man or Oh, woman, bring them back bound to Jerusalem. Go ahead and read on. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly did there shine round about him a light from heaven. Uh -huh. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, the Lord is getting his attention, first of all. Now, he is he on his way to Damascus to bind up the people and bring them back to Jerusalem. And all of a sudden, he heard a voice, you know, uh, Say, uh, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Go ahead and read on. And he said, uh -huh. Who art thou, Lord? Go ahead. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Go ahead and read. And he, and he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, we're not going to bother reading all this, but now, I want you to skip down to uh, uh, skip down to uh, 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 verse 10. Go ahead and read. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in the vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And have seen in the vision a man named Ananias coming in uh -huh. and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. So now, you know, as Paul was going to Damascus then, he was knocked down. We didn't bother reading all that. He was blinded. So now then they led him away and, and, and now he is blind. And so uh, 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 he said, now, Paul, you're going to see a man named Ananias. And, you know, in, he's showing Paul this in this vision. Coming unto you, he's going to lay hands on you. You're going to receive sight. Go ahead and read on. Then Ananias answered, uh -huh. Lord, I have heard by many of this man Go ahead. how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. So now Ananias even went so far as to question the Lord. Lord, do you really know what you're doing? I done heard about this man. 
and about the things that he has done to the saints that are at Jerusalem. But however, Lord going to let him know, you know, this man's a chosen vessel unto me. So apparently what Paul did, he did it in ignorance. You understand what I'm saying? It's one thing to do something willfully, and it's another thing to do something in ignorance. That's right. So now after the Lord had knocked him down and blinded him, now he's gotten his attention. Now he's going to make him aware of what it is that he want him to do. Go ahead and read on. And here he have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Now, and Ananias saying to the Lord, now, and I've heard about this man, and I've heard that he have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call up on your name. Go ahead and read on. But the Lord said unto him, uh -huh. go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, uh -huh. to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now he said he's a chosen vessel unto me. Remember, now he told the twelve, don't go in the way of the Gentiles, didn't he? That's right. But now he's saying to Paul, he's a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name unto the Gentiles as well as to Israel. Go ahead and read on. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. See what the Lord said, I'm going to show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. You know, Paul brought a lot of suffering to others because right. of the name of the Lord. Now the Lord right. said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you suffer for my name's sake. Because he was persecuting them. That's why Jesus asked him, Paul, Paul, why persecuted thou me? So now, the Lord didn't use him, he didn't call him as a chosen vessel to bear his name among the Gentiles. Let's go now to uh, 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 Acts chapter 19. And we'll pick it up at verse 8. I'm going to show you what Paul taught now. Jesus came with the message of the gospel of the kingdom. Then he sent out the twelve. They had the message of the gospel of the kingdom. Now, show you what Paul taught. Acts chapter 19. And we'll begin reading at verse 8. 19 and 8. 19 and 8. Okay, go ahead and read. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, uh -huh. disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Now, that's Paul you're reading about. And what is the message that he came with? The message of the kingdom of God. So now it said he went into the synagogue and spake boldly by the space of three months, disputing and persuading things concerning the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read on. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil that day before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, mm. disputing daily in the school of one tyrannous. Uh -huh. And this continued by the space of two years, Go ahead. so that all that which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, uh -huh. both Jews and Greeks. Now, you know, he said both Jews and Greeks. But now, my point is, is that the message that Jesus came with the same one that he gave to the twelve, that is the same message that Paul came with. Right. So he didn't come with nothing different. You understand what I'm saying? He came with the same thing. He just fell in line with everybody else. When the Lord called him, he fell in line with all of the rest. The very same message of the gospel of the kingdom. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we'll begin reading at verse 6. 2 Timothy 1, and we will pick it up at verse 6. 1 and 6. 1 and 6. <clears throat> okay, now this is the letter that Paul is writing unto Timothy here. Start reading at verse 6. 1 and 6. Okay, go ahead and read. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, uh -huh. which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. Go ahead. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh -huh. Be not there, thou deaf. Be not thou deaf. Therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, uh -huh. nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Now uh, Paul is saying to Timothy, he said, you know, don't be ashamed. Of the testimony of the Lord or even of me, his prisoner. Paul said, I'm a prisoner for this thing. In other words, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bound by this, this, this gospel here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. Who have saved us and called us with an holy calling. Uh -huh. Not according to our works. Go ahead. But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Go ahead and read. 
but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, uh -huh. who have abolished death and have brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Go ahead. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. See what Paul is saying to Timothy? You know, he said, whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher unto the Gentiles, he's saying it. That is why the Lord called him, didn't he? Yes, when the Lord called him, he said, this is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name among the Gentiles. So now, the same message that he gave to the 12 is the same message that he gave to Paul. But he said to the 12, don't go among the Gentiles. But then he called Paul to send him among the Gentiles. Let's go now to uh, 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 Galatians chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. Galatians 2, and we will pick it up at verse 1. 2 and 1. 2 and 1. Okay. Go ahead and read, bro. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem uh, with Barnabas uh -huh. and took Titus with me also. Now, this is Paul. He's, he's you know, he's uh, saying to the Galatians, you know, 14 years after I went up again unto Jerusalem uh, with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Go ahead and read on. And I went up by revelation uh -huh. and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Now he said, I went up by revelation and I communicated to them that gospel that I preach among the Gentiles. And what was the gospel that he preached among the Gentiles? It was the gospel of the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read on. But poverty to them which were of reputation, uh -huh. lest by any means I should run or, had ran or run in vain. Now skip down to verse 7. Continue reading. Go ahead. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the, circum the circumcision was unto Peter. Now, who is the uncircumcision? That is the Gentiles, right? Now, who is the circumcision? That is the Jew. Now, remember, he sent Peter and the rest unto the Jew, didn't he? And told them, don't go in the way of the Gentile. But then he turned around and he sent Paul unto the Gentile. But they all had the same message, though. You know, he gave Paul... The message of the kingdom of God. And that is the same message that he gave unto the twelve. He sent the twelve to the Jews. And he sent the, uh, Paul unto the Gentiles. Same message though. Not a different gospel. But the same identical gospel. Go ahead and read on. For he that wrought effectually in Peter uh, to the apostleship of the circumcision. See, but he that w worked effectually in Peter to the apostleship. Of the circumcision, or in other words, to the Israelites or the Jews. He that worked in Peter effectively to the circumcision. Go ahead and read on. The same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. See what it said? The same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Very same message. Only thing is, he sent Paul to the Gentiles and he sent the rest of the twelve unto Israel or unto the Jews. Go ahead and read that next verse. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, uh -huh. that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Now he said when they perceived, you know, they said that then they would go unto the heathen, which means the nations, and that we should go unto the circumcision of the Israelites. Go ahead and read on. Only they were that we should remember the poor, uh -huh. the same which I also was forward to do. Now, that is good. Now, now, what do we have here? You know, we got Paul. With the gospel of the kingdom going to the Gentile. We have Peter and the rest going unto Israel or to the Jews. That's what we have. Same message, not a different message, but the same identical message. They all had the message of the kingdom of God. That is the message that Jesus came with, and that is the message that he gave to all that he sent out. Let's go now to... Uh, 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 Romans chapter 11. We're going to read just one verse here. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. And we'll begin, well, we're going to read uh, verse 13. Romans 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. We're going to read just one verse. This is what Paul said to the Romans here. Romans 11. Verse 13. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. For I speak to you Gentiles, uh -huh. inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. 
I magnify my office. Now, this is what Paul is saying. He said, I speak to you Gentiles because I am an apostle to the Gentiles, and I magnify my office. Now, let's go over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we'll pick it up at verse 11. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 11. And just show you, Paul's dispensation was the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. That is what his dispensation was. That is what his stewardship was was that is what the Lord gave him the responsibility to do was to be a, 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 a an apostle unto the Gentiles let's start reading here at 1st Corinthians chapter 9 and we'll begin reading at verse 11 1st Corinthians 9 and we'll pick it up at verse 11 9 and 11 <coughs> okay go ahead and read if we are sown unto you spiritual things, mm -hmm. it is a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things. Go ahead. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. And now he said, we suffer all things, least that we should hinder the gospel of Christ. And we know what the gospel of Christ is. It is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Skip down to verse 15. Continue reading. Go ahead and read. <laughs> but I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, uh -huh. that it should be so done unto me. Go ahead. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory in void. Go ahead and read. For though I preach the gospel, mm -hmm. I have nothing to glory of. Mm -hmm. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Go ahead and read. <laughs> for if I do this thing willful, willingly, I, will, I have a reward. But if... But if against my will, uh. a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Now, you know, he said a dispensation, a, a stewardship of the gospel, in other words. Now, you know, he's saying now, you know, woe be unto me if I do not preach this gospel. And he said, uh, you know, a dispensation of this gospel have been committed unto me. Go ahead and read on. What is my reward then? Uh-huh. Verily that. Go ahead. When I preach the gospel, uh -huh. I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. That I abuse not my power in the gospel. See what it says, that I might make the gospel of Christ without charge. So that is the gospel that he's telling us about, that he has been given a dispensation over, and it is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we know that that is the gospel of the kingdom of God. He said it again. Let's go this time to Ephesians chapter 3, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1. Ephesians 3. And we'll begin reading at verse 1, Ephesians 3 and 1. 3 and 1. <clears throat> so now, you know, this is the doctrine that Paul taught. You know, he taught the, uh, the doctrine of the kingdom of God. That is what he taught. Ephesians chapter 3 and began reading at verse 1. 3 and 1. And for a while this was a mystery to the people. Start reading at 3 and 1. Go ahead and read. For this call, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. See what I said? For this call, I, Paul, he said, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Because that is what the Lord chose him to do, to be an apostle unto the Gentiles. Go ahead and read on. If ye had heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, to you were. See what I said? If you have heard. Of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you. Uh, in other words, of the stewardship that I have been given. The responsibility of taking this gospel unto the Gentiles. Go ahead and read on. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Uh -huh. As I wrote a four in few words. Now he said, God have made known this revelation unto me. And he said, this is a mystery. He said, I wrote about it in a few words. Go ahead and read on. Whereby when you read. Ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, uh -huh. which in other ages was not was not made known unto the sons of men. Go ahead, read. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles, prophets by the Spirit. Go ahead. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and, and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. See what it said, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Because, you know, Israel had this thing. They really thought this word was just for them. Even the apostles even thought that for a time. That's why the Lord had to show Peter in that vision on that great sheet that was let down four corners of the earth with all them beasts on it. And the voice said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter thought it was talking about food. And he said, ain't never ain't nothing come unclean. 
But then the Lord made it known unto him that this is not about food. It is about the Gentiles coming into the word. So now even they thought for a time that this was only for him. That is why it was a mystery. That's why he's calling it a mystery. But he said, now God have made this known unto him. Let's go now to uh, 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 Acts chapter 28. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Acts 28 and we're going to pick it up at verse 23. 28. And verse 23, and I'm going to show you wherever Paul went, he still had that same message of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 28, and we began reading at verse 23. 28 and 23. Okay. Okay, go ahead and read, bro. And when they had appointed him a day. Now, this is Paul, you know, he had having to defend himself as he often did. Because he was always being falsely accused of something. But now he is defending himself. And now they appointed him a day to do that. Go ahead and read on. There came many to him into his lodging. Uh-huh. To whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. See what I said? There came many unto him in his lodges that he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. So wherever he went, the message didn't change. You understand? It didn't matter who he was talking to, whether it was Israel or whether it was the Gentile. The message always was the same. The gospel of the kingdom of God. Go ahead and finish that verse. Persuading them concerning Jesus. Now he said, and he was persuading them concerning Jesus. And look at how he was going about it. Go ahead and read on. Both out of the law of Moses uh -huh. and out of the prophets from morning till evening. See what I said? Both out of the law of Moses and out of, that's what he taught out of. He taught out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. You understand what I'm saying? Right. That is what he taught out of. He even said it again. Let's go to Acts chapter 24. No, skip down to verse 30 first. I'm sorry. Verse 30 before we go there. Go ahead. Verse 30. Go ahead and read. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own in his own hired house. In other words, you know, he rented out a house here, and he dwelt there two whole years, and this is what he was doing. Go ahead and read on. And received all that came in unto him. Uh-huh. Preaching the kingdom of God. See what he was doing? Preaching the kingdom of God. The message didn't change, people. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. As the message Jesus came with, that's what he gave the twelve, that's what he gave Paul, and the message did not change. He continued to preach the message of the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read on. And teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ uh -huh. with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So so much for Paul coming with his own thing. Because that's what they tell you. You know, we are under the dispensation of Paul. Well, the dispensation of Paul is the stewardship of of the gospel of Jesus Christ unto the Gentiles. That is the, that is the dispensation that Paul is under. The same one that the twelve was under. The same one that Jesus was under. That's right. Let's go now to uh, 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 Acts chapter 24. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Acts 24. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. 24 and 1. 24 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. And after five days, Ananias, the high priest, descended uh -huh. with the elders uh -huh. and with a certain orator named Tertullus, go ahead. who informed the governor against Paul. So now, you know, they're making these accusations against Paul. So now, you know, they came down and they even brought a professional orator. You know, we got to have somebody going to make this thing sound real good. So now they done got this guy here and they going to bring him down and he going to try to run this past Felix which was the governor of Judea at that time. Go ahead and read on. And when he was called forth, uh -huh. Tertullus began to accuse him, saying. Go ahead. Now, when they, when they, they called this uh, Tertullus forth, he began to accuse Paul, saying. Go ahead and read on. Seeing by thee we enjoy great quietness, uh -huh. and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. So first he's going to try to stroke Felix. You know, you know, you've been real good to this nation and all that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to lay that on real thick to try to get, you know, try to get Felix to, uh, to really go along with him. Go ahead and read on. We accept it always uh -huh. and in all places, most noble Felix, uh -huh. with, all thank with all thankfulness. See what I said? We accept 
in all ways, in all places, most noble Felix, he called him. And with all thanksgiving, go ahead and read on. Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, uh -huh. I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. Go ahead. Now, he, he, you know, he's stroking him. Uh, you know, I pray that you hear us, uh, you know, of your clemency. And, and uh, you know, just for a few words here, that's all. Go ahead and read on. We have found this man a pestilent fellow. Uh, now, this is what he's saying about Paul. We have found him to be a pestilent fellow. Go ahead and read on. And a mover of sedition among uh, and among all the Jews throughout the world. Now, he said he's a mover of sedition. In other words, one that causes rebellion. And if he caused any rebellion, it was only because he preached the message of the kingdom of God. That's right. However, that will cause rebellion. Yes, sir. If you don't think it will, you just walk up in one of these churches That's and right. start preaching out of the Bible and you will see that it will cause rebellion. So they may have been somewhat right. However, that was not his intent to be a mover of sedition. His intent was simply to preach the word of God. Go ahead and read on. And a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Now he's saying he's a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Go ahead and read on. Who also have gone about to profane the temple, uh -huh. whom we took and would have judged according to our law. Now he's saying he even went about to profane the temple, and we took him, and we would have judged him according to our You know, we wound up having to bring, come before you, old Felix, but we was going to deal with him ourselves. Okay. But. You sent somebody to stop us. Go ahead and read on. But the chief captain, Lysias, came unto us. Now the chief captain, Lysias, he came up on us and he stopped us. Go ahead and read on. And with great violence took him away out of our hands. So now this chief captain, Lysias, he came up on us and with great violence he took him out of our hand. We was getting ready to deal with him. But now this chief captain, he came up and he took him out of our hand. Go ahead and read on. Commanding his accusers to come unto thee. Uh -huh. by, examining, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things. Uh -huh. Whereof we accuse him. Go ahead. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Now, you know, after he done ran it down, then the Jews, they agreed. That, yeah, what he's saying is right. All that, he, all that he's telling you, it is right. Go ahead and read on. Then Paul after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, uh -huh. For as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. Now, Paul, so I'm going to answer for my own self here. Go ahead and read on. Because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days as I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. Now, Paul said it was twelve days ago, and I went up to Jerusalem to worship. Go ahead and read on. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, uh -huh. neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues, nor in the city. I wasn't no move of sedition. You know, I just went up there ready to preach the gospel. He said they didn't find me in the synagogue disputing with any man or none of that stuff. Go ahead and read on. Neither can they prove the things where they now accuse me. And the things that they accuse me of, they can't prove that either. Go ahead and read on. But this I confess unto thee. Now he said, but Felix, this I confess unto you. Go ahead and read on. That after the way which they call heresy. Now after the way that they call heresy. Heresy means something that is contrary to the word of God. He said now after the manner that they call heresy. Go ahead and read on. So worship I the God of my father. Uh -huh. Believe in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. He said that is how I worship the God of my fathers. Believe in all things that are written in the law and in the prophet. And he, he meant just that. You understand what I'm saying? We read earlier where he was disputing with them out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, didn't he? Yes, because sir. everything that he taught, everything that he believed in, it came out of the law and out of the prophets. So much for him coming up with his own thing. You know, we read earlier he came with the gospel. Then Jesus started That's the right. thing, didn't he? Yes, sir. That's right. Then he gave it to the twelve. That's right. Then he gave it unto Paul. And that is what he taught. Then he turned around and told the people the stuff that I believe in. I believe in the law of Moses and in the prophet. Now he's saying here again that, you know, the things that they accuse me of, accusing me of heresy, that is how I worship the God of my fathers, believe in all things that are written in the law and in the prophet. So where did he get his message from? What did he, uh, what did he believe in? He believed in the law 
and in the prophets. Amen. Amen. Yes, so much for him coming up with his own thing like they tell you. You know, uh, the, the prophets, they had a dispensation. Jesus had one mm -hmm. and the 12 had one and then Paul had another. No, he didn't. He taught the things that Jesus taught. He taught the things that the 12 taught. And he taught the things that was taught in the Old Testament. Amen. That is scripture. You understand? Now, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, 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 Genesis chapter 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 12 and verse 1. 12 and 1. You're going to take it back. And deal with some of the stuff that's written in the law and the prophets. Then we're going to take a look at what Paul taught. Genesis chapter 12 began reading at verse 1. 12 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, mm -hmm. Get thee out of thy country, go ahead. and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Go ahead and read. And I will make of thee a great nation, uh -huh. and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. Go ahead. And thou shalt be a blessing. Uh-huh. And I will bless them that bless thee. Go ahead. And curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now this is what the uh, Lord said unto Abraham. You know this is part of the covenant that he made with Abraham. You know uh, get thee out of thy country and away from thy kindred's house. And uh, I'm going to make a great nation of you. And in you will all nations of the earth be blessed. Let's go to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 22. And we'll pick it up at verse 15, Genesis chapter 22, and we'll pick it up at verse 15, 22 and 15. Something else that he said unto Abraham here. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 15. Okay, go ahead and read. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Now this is the angel that the Lord then sent unto Abraham, and then he called unto Abraham out of heaven for the second time. Go ahead and read. And said... By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, uh -huh. for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son. You know, the Lord had told Abraham to take his son and sacrifice him. And Abraham was about to do that. Then the Lord had the angel to stop Abraham. Now he's saying unto Abraham, because you have not withheld your son, your only son. Abraham was getting ready to do exactly as God had told him to do. Lord told him to offer him up. Abraham was getting ready to do that. So now, Lord said, because you have not withheld your son, your only son. Go ahead and read on. Verse 17. That in blessing I will bless thee. That in blessing Abraham I will bless you. Go ahead and read. And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Uh -huh. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. Go ahead. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Go ahead and read. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. See what the Lord said. And then he said, Abraham, in your seed will all nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So now he told Abraham, and you, Abraham, will all nations be blessed. Then he turned around and told Abraham, in your seed will all nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Let's go now to uh, 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 uh. Galatians chapter 3. And I'm going to show you what Paul talked about. Paul told, uh, told you that, you know, that he taught out of the law and out of the prophets. Everything he believed in, he got it out of the law and he got it out of the prophets. Let's start reading here at Galatians chapter 3 and we'll begin reading in verse 6. Because everybody likes to go and, 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 and mess Paul. I ain't going to say read it. I almost said read it. <laughs> And, 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 and that would be untrue. But everybody likes to go into his writing and read at it. That's a little better. And mess it up. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody ever goes back to find out where he got the information from that he taught. That is why I went from Paul's writing all the way back to Moses' writing in Genesis chapter 12 and chapter 22. Because sometimes you need to go back to the source to make certain that you get everything right. You understand what I'm saying? So now, 
He said unto Abraham, Abraham, and you will all nations of the earth be blessed. Then he turned around and said unto Abraham, in your seed will all nations of the earth be blessed. Let's start reading here at Galatians chapter 3. Now we are going to look at what Paul taught. Okay. Start reading at Galatians chapter 3 and verse Six, because this lesson is about the doctrine that Paul taught. Start reading at verse six. Go ahead, and read. Even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Uh huh. Know ye therefore that they which are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Now he said, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And that's true, they really are. If you had a faith of Abraham, then spiritually speaking, you are a child, amen. Ain't that what uh, 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 Jesus said to them Jews when they told them, we be Abraham's seed and we ain't been in bondage to no man? Jesus said, yes, I know that you be Abraham's seed, but you are really of your father the devil. Because if you were really Abraham's seed, then you would do the works of Abraham. So physically, you Abraham's seed, but spiritually, you are of your father the devil. So now, he is saying here, so what he is saying is right in line with what Jesus said. Now, what he is saying here, know ye therefore that they which be of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Go ahead, read on. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. And he said, and the scripture. What scripture? The scripture that we read back in Genesis. That's right. The scripture for sin that God would justify the nations through faith. Go ahead and read on. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying. He said he preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying. Go ahead and read on. In thee shall all nations be blessed. Where did he get that from? He got Genesis. it out of Genesis, didn't yes, he? So he told you what I believe in. I believe in what is written in the law and in the prophets. So now, he says here, And the scripture for sin that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached unto them, uh, preached unto uh, the gospel unto Abraham, that in thee all nations shall be blessed. Go ahead and read on. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Because he did say that in Abraham, and in you Abraham, would all nations of the earth be blessed, right? That's right. So, so that included everybody, didn't it? Right. It didn't just include Israel. It included everybody. He said all nations will be blessed in you, Abraham. Then he turned around and said in your seed. Go ahead and read on though. For as many as are are of the works of the law uh -huh. under this curse Go under ahead. the curse uh -huh. for it is written curses everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them now what is the curse of the law the curse of the law is death that's right and the book said everybody has broken the law therefore that means that everybody was under the curse then everybody but the lord is merciful thank god he is go ahead and read on but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Uh -huh. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And ain't no man justified by the law in the sight of God. The law does not justify you. Yeah, but you know, people like to read stuff like this to try and circumvent the law. See, the law don't justify you. That means you ain't got to keep the law. No, that ain't what that means. It means exactly what it said. The law does not justify you. It does not clear you of guilt. The law declares you guilty. The only thing that clears you of guilt is the blood of Jesus. Nothing else. That is the only thing that clears you of guilt. Go ahead and read on. And the law is not of faith. Uh -huh. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Go ahead. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, uh -huh. being made a curse for us. See what it said? Jesus redeemed us for the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. How was he made a curse for us? He was made a curse for us by dying for our sin. That is how he was, because the wages of sin is death. Somebody got to die. 
Sin brings about death. Somebody got to die for your sin. Either Jesus died for him or you going to die for him. Amen. One or the other. Somebody going to die for him. Now it is up to you. And, 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 and the thing about it is you have the option. You can either die for yourself or you can let Jesus die for you. Whichever one you choose. If you want Jesus to die for your sins, then you have to obey. If you want to die for your own sins, just keep doing the wrong thing. That's all you got to do. <laughs> just, just don't change. Just keep sinning. Just, just keep sinning and you will die for yourself. Now, he said, uh, uh, Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written. Go ahead and read on. For it is written. Uh-huh. Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Go ahead and read. That the blessing of Abraham might come come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Go ahead. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Go ahead and read. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Uh-huh. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulled or added thereto. And it been confirmed. Jesus came and he confirmed it. Wow. So now it said, if it be confirmed, can't nobody disannul it and you can't add nothing to it. Jesus confirmed it, so therefore it is etched in stone. Go ahead and read. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. Now he said unto Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Go ahead and read on. He said not and to seeds as of many. Now he said not as to seeds as of many, but this is what he said. Go ahead and read. But as of one uh -huh. and to thy seed, which is Christ. But as of one to thy seed, which is Christ. So now it is through Jesus that all nations of the earth will be blessed. That is Amen. what Paul taught. You understand? Because that's who's writing you a reading here. But then where did he get it from? He got it out of the law and out of the prophets. That's where he got it from. So what did he teach that was different from what was written in the law? Nothing. 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 Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, 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 Exodus chapter 20. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. So now, you know, he said, I believe in what's written in the law and the prophets. So we just need to read what's written a little bit in the law and the prophets and then compare it to what he taught. Exodus chapter 20, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 20 and 1. Now, if you read Exodus 19, you will find that the Lord told Moses to tell Israel to come up unto the mount. You know, keep yourself clean. Don't come at your wife for three days, you know, and, 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 and when you come up, even have your clothes clean. And when you come before me, because now the Lord himself is about to come down on the Mount Sinai and speak unto the people. Everybody thought that Moses gave you the Ten Commandments. No, God gave you the Ten Commandments. Before That's he right. even gave them to Moses to give to the people, he first spoke them himself. You know, because everybody likes to say the law of Moses. No, it is the law of the Lord that he gave unto Moses. Let's get it straight. Even when he gave it to Moses, if you will read it, it will, it will read as such. The Lord spake unto Moses and said, speak unto the people. Not Moses sat down and decided, this is what I'm going to tell the people. That's not how it happened. The Lord told Moses, you go tell the people this. All Moses was, was a messenger. So now, before he sent Moses to tell the people, he first spake them himself, Exodus 20 and 1. Go ahead, read on. And God spake all these words, saying. And not Moses spake all of these words, saying. And God spake all of these words, saying. Go ahead, read. I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. Go ahead. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image uh -huh. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath Go ahead. or that is in the water under the earth. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them Go ahead. nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God and a jealous God, 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Uh huh. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. He said, and showing, I'm the Lord your God. Don't have no other gods before me. Showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So there's a stipulation on God's mercy then. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Those that love him and keep his commandments. Everybody want to cry out to the, for the Lord's mercy, but don't nobody want to keep the commandments. But God said, I show mercy unto to those that love me right. and keep my commandments. That's right. Go ahead and read on. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Go ahead. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Uh huh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shall thou labor and Go do ahead. all thy work. Uh huh. And the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day, who Sabbath? The Lord. And who said that it is his Sabbath? The Lord. The Lord spake unto people, <laughs> saying. He said, God said the seventh day is the Sabbath for the Lord. Moses didn't say it. The house of Jacob didn't say it. God said it. If you have a problem with it, then your problem is with God. That's right. Take your argument to him. Okay, don't bring it to me. Because I did not make the seventh day the Sabbath day. God said the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And then if you will go and read Leviticus chapter 23, he said that you ought to have a holy convocation on this day. That is why I like that song so much that they sang today. That is what you call singing with understanding. Where did they get it from? Out of the scriptures. scriptures. That is where they got it. Right. That is why it is understanding. Because it came from the scripture. So now if you want to do it the way God said do it, then do it according to the scripture. And if you do it any other way, I'm going to tell you, like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, it is all in vain. Yes, mm -hmm. Don't wait to have to find that out at the wrong time. That's right. Don't wait until that day of judgment and find that out. God said the seventh day. Well, I think it's the first day because my preacher told me, now you standing before the judgment, and, God, and guess what he's going to judge you by? What is written in this book. That's right. He's going to say, I told you to keep a holy convocation on the seventh day. Well, my preacher told me, wait a minute, what did I tell you? Amen. Go, don't, don't think it's not some going to come with that argument. You understand what I'm saying? They going to tell God what they preachers see. <laughs> and God going to tell them what I see. That's right. <laughs> so now who are you serving? Think about that. Right. Now, the Lord have given these commandments. We didn't bother reading them all, but this we will call the moral law. He gave them commandments. That's right. Now, Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, 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 Leviticus chapter four, and we'll come right to the point, verse twenty-seven. So now you had the moral law. That was given by God. Then God turned around and He gave a, another law. Leviticus chapter 4, and we'll begin reading at verse 27. You say, yeah, I see you back in the law here, but you're talking about Paul, right? Yeah, but Paul told you, I believe in the law and in the prophets. So we're going to just see what the law and the prophets said. Then we're going to see what he taught. Leviticus chapter 4, and start reading at verse 27. Go ahead and read. And if any one of the common people sin through ignorance. Wait a minute. Now, what is, what is sin? Transgression of the law. I'll I, I tell you what. Do me a favor. Turn over to 1 John chapter 3. And read verse 4. That's all. Just John chapter 3. And... Verse 4. 
Go ahead and read it. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Uh huh. For sin is a transgression of the law. You know, I just figured I need to read that out of the New Testament. You know, cause, cause you know you got these people. Everybody want to circumvent the law, but 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 they say they believe in the New Testament. They even go so far as to say we are New Testament Christians. Don't bring me the Old Testament. Read it to me out of the New Way. You got it. <laughs> and it is the transgression of the law. In fact, now I better read James chapter two now. Since we doing this, we may as well go ahead and do this. James chapter 2. And we'll pick it up around verse 8. You know, this is just something I threw in here for a little flavor here. This was not a part of the original lesson here. But I figured we had better do this. James chapter 2, start reading at verse 8. Go ahead and read. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture... Uh -huh. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Go ahead. Ye do well. Uh huh. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. Go ahead. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. Now he said, you know you got a law. We didn't bother reading that. But that, that is written in Leviticus 19, I believe. It said, do not have respect to persons. Right. And he said, if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and you are convicted of the law as a transgressor. Go ahead and read on. For whosoever should keep the whole law uh -huh. and yet offend in one point, Go ahead. he is guilty of all. Go ahead and read. For he that saith, do not commit adultery, said, uh, said also, do not kill. Wait a minute. Now, where did he say do not commit adultery at? In the ten. Where did he say do not kill at? In the ten. In the ten. So, therefore, he have taken you back to the ten then, haven't he? Go ahead and read on. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, uh -huh. thou art become a transgressor of the law. In other words, you have sinned because sin is the transgression of the law, the transgression of the moral law. That is what sin is. That is, that is the New Testament's definition of sin. Amen. Let's go back now to the Old Testament. Now that we have established that. Let's go back to uh, 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 Leviticus chapter 4, and we'll pick it back up at verse 27. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 27. 4 and 27. Okay, we can get it. Go ahead and read. 4 and 27. And if any one of the common people sin through ignorance. Now, in other words, if any one of them transgress the moral law, and they do it unintentionally. You know, they didn't just willfully break the law. They just inadvertently transgress the law. Go ahead and read on. While he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning the things which are not to be done, While and he be do guilty. What? While he go against any of the commandments of the Lord. So sin is a transgression of the law in the Old Testament, right? And it's a transgression of the law in the New Testament That's then, right. right? So sin is a transgression of the law. Whatever part of the Bible you happen to believe in. That's if you believe in any of it. Sin is the transgression of the law. Now, he said, if they do anything against any of the commandments of the Lord thy God. Go ahead and read on. Verse 28. Go ahead. Or if his sin which he have sinned come to his knowledge, uh -huh. then he should bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin which he have sinned. Uh -huh. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering Go ahead. and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. And the priest should take of the blood thereof. Oh, you mean because he sinned, some had to die. Yes, sir. Some blood had to be shed. Yes, sir. You know, Paul even wrote in, in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 10, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. That's right. In other words, when somebody sinned, some blood, if in order for sin to be forgiven, some blood got to be shed. Some got to die. You know, this was point. To something far bigger than just killing some four-legged animal. But what it was getting you ready for, it was a schoolmaster to bring you unto Christ. To let you know down the line that something got to die when you have sin. There's going to come a time when you won't be killing animals anymore. But still and all, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Some got to die for sin. You can die for your own if you want. I don't intend to die for mine. <laughs> Go ahead and read. 
Verse 30. Go ahead. And the priest should take of the blood there with his finger uh-huh. and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering. Go ahead. And should pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. Uh-huh. And he should take away all the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of peace offerings. Uh-huh. And the priest should burn it and should burn it upon the altar for a sweet savior unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And the priest should make an atonement for him. And it should be forgiven him. In other words, all that had to happen in order for his sin to be forgiven him. So now, you know, you got, uh, you had a law, a moral law, right? Then what happened? The Lord added another law. Because he said, when you sin, then this is what you got to do, right? right? When you sin, this is what you, he added another law. And we'll simply call it the animal it is the animal sacrifice law. So he gave you a moral law and told you if you break it, then you got to offer up this animal. So he gave you this law and then he turned around and added that law. And why was it added? Because of sin. And what was this animal called? It was called a what? A sin offering. That's what it was called. Now, that we have established that. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 26. Daniel 9 and 26. 9 and 26. Show you what happened with that animal law. Show you what God said happened with it. You know, it is written in the book of Daniel, but the message that Daniel wrote is the message that God sent the angel to give unto Daniel. You know, Daniel didn't sit down and say, well, you know, I think this is how it goes. No. God gave the angel the message to give unto Daniel, and Daniel just wrote it down. Start reading at Daniel chapter 9 and began at verse 26. Go ahead and read. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Now who is Messiah? Jesus. I just want to make sure everybody understand that. Messiah, that is Jesus. You know, you go to John uh, uh, chapter 4. Jesus uh, told a woman, uh, you know, the woman told Jesus, say, you know, we know that when the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, he would tell us all things. Jesus said, I did speak unto you. I am he. In other words, I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. So just so you know, when you read here about a Messiah here, you are reading about Jesus. Go ahead and read, brother. But not for himself. Now he said that he would be cut off. Killed, in other words, but not for himself. Go ahead and read on. And the people of the prince that should come should destroy the city and the sanctuary. Go ahead. And the end thereof should be with the flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Go ahead. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Uh huh. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Well, he didn't say in the midst of the week he would cause the moral law to cease, did he? No, no sir. Or no other law, did he? No, sir. He said in the midst of the week, he will cause sacrifices and oblation to cease. And this is dealing with his death. And when he was cut off. How, and how was he cut off? He died by crucifixion. He died on the cross, didn't he? Right. So in other words, when he died, then they will not sacrifice animals anymore. Okay. The end of the animal sacrifice law. He called sacrifices and oblations to see. So now the animal sacrifice law, that's gone. And when did it leave? It left when Jesus died, didn't that's it? Right. Let's go to uh, 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 Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53, and we will pick it up at verse 6. Isaiah 53, and we will begin reading at verse 6. 53 and 6. This is Jesus, too, that you are reading about. Because we read earlier where Paul said he disputed with them out of the law and out of the prophets things concerning Jesus Christ. Jesus did not start in Matthew 1. He started in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. 
then it went on to tell you about how this God would become man. And that's when he started in Matthew chapter 1. Now, let's start reading here. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. Because uh, all, when he became man and all of the stuff that happened to him, the prophets had already written about it. We just read where he would be cut off, but That's not right. for himself, didn't he? Yes, right. So, therefore, when you read in, in Ephesians and, and Colossians and, and Peter and James and all of them about him dying for the sins of the people, it had already been written in Daniel and Isaiah That's right. and some other places even. So it was old news by the time it got to Paul. It was old news. <laughs> Start reading at, uh, at Isaiah chapter 53 and began reading at verse 6. 53 and 6. Go ahead and read. All we like sheep have gone astray. Uh -huh. We have turned everyone to his own way. Go ahead. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. And yes, he has. He has laid on him. Who is this him? This is Jesus. The Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Go ahead and read on. He was oppressed. Go ahead. And he was afflicted. Uh -huh. Yet he opened not his mouth. Go ahead. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Uh -huh. And as a sheep before her shears is done. Go ahead. So he opened not his mouth. Go ahead, read. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Uh -huh. And who shall declare his generation? Go ahead. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. You know, Daniel wrote that he was cut off but not for himself. Isaiah wrote that he was cut off out of the land of the living but a transgression of my people. Isaiah told you he was cut off for. Daniel just told you he was cut off but not for himself. Now you know he was cut off for. He was cut off for the Lord's people and that includes everybody that will be a servant of God not That's right. this this the Lord's people is not Israel here this is everybody that will be a servant of the true and living God go ahead and read on and he made his grave with the wicked go ahead. and with the rich in his death uh -huh. because he had done no violence go ahead. neither was any deceit in his mouth go ahead and read yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him uh -huh. he had put him to grief go ahead when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin stop wait a minute I, I thought the, I thought the uh, animal the animal the animal was the sin offering but then God had the angel to tell Daniel, when Jesus be cut off, there would be no more animal sacrifices. So now, who is the sin offering now? Jesus now is the sin offering. Finish that verse. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, uh -huh. he shall see his seed. Go ahead. He shall prolong his days, uh -huh. and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Yeah, that means something. We'll, we'll deal with that another time. But now, let's go to Psalms chapter 40, and we'll pick it up at verse 6. Psalms 40 and verse 6. 40 and 6. 40 and 6. You know, we're looking at what the prophets wrote. Then we're going to compare it to what Paul said. Psalms 40 and verse 6. Okay, go ahead and read. Sacrifice and offerings thou does not desire. Wait a minute. Y yes, he did. Because who gave you the sacrifice and an offering in the first place? Did Moses give them to you? No, sir. No. The Lord told Moses to tell the people, when you sin, this is what you do. Right. You go and bring your animal up to the priest, and this animal got to be killed, the blood got to be spread, and all of that stuff. Then your sins will be forgiven you. Right. But now, this, what we are reading here, was speaking of a time that was yet future. It was a prophecy. It was the prophecy concerning when the Lord would no longer desire sacrifices and offerings. Because it really couldn't get the job done anyway. But nevertheless, the Lord set it up as a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Go ahead. She says, sacrifices and offering thou didst not desire. Go ahead and read on. My ears has thou opened. Go ahead. Burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required. Go ahead and read. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. Now you know this ain't David. 
Because David do not come in the volume of the book. You understand what I'm saying? He said, in the volume of the book, for it is written of me. But you know who does come in the volume of the book? Jesus. Jesus. He come when it said, in the beginning. Genesis 1 and 1. And he is there at Revelation chapter 22. However the last verse reads. Because he even told you in Revelation chapter 22, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I was there in the beginning and I will be there in the end. So now, he said, it, though I come in the volume of the book, but it is written of me. Go ahead and read on. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Go ahead. Yea, thy law is within my heart. He said, now I delight. To do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within thy heart. And it was the Lord's will that he died for the sins of the people. Because the book said when Jesus was cut off, he said God looked at it and he was well pleased. That's right. Because he loved man so much that he gave his only begotten son to suffer and die for the sins of man. And God was well pleased when he saw that. Let's go now. Now, we know what the prophets wrote. You know, the prophets wrote that, uh, you know, God gave a moral law. Then he added an animal sacrifice law. Then when Jesus died, that ended that animal sacrifice law. That's what the prophets wrote. Let's go show you what Paul taught. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. 10 and 1. 10 and 1. See, maybe, just maybe, if you would stop listening to the preacher long enough to go back and read what is written in the Old Testament, then maybe you would know what's going on. How are you going to understand a truth without going back to the source. There was a source that Paul went back to. He didn't come up with none of that stuff. He told you about in Abraham with all nations of the earth be blessed. But, he, but where did he get it from? He got it from the source, didn't he? And he told you in Abraham's seed with all nations of the earth be blessed. He went back to the source to get that information. You need to go back to the source. But don't nobody want to do that. You know, it's easy just just sit there and say, well, you know what my preacher said, just go with that. <laughs> it sounds good to me. Uh, you know, um, uh, that mom, mom believed in it, grandma believed in it, so hey, why not? Can't, can't be nothing wrong with it. You know, grandma, she was a, the good Christian woman, so uh, you know, I, I, I know what she said is right. I'll tell you something, Grandmama never went back to the source either. Because if she had, then she wouldn't have been telling you that. Now, we are going to read what Paul taught. Start reading at uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. For the law having a shadow of good things to come mm -hmm. and not the very image of the things. Now he's going to tell you what law it is that he's dealing with here. Because you know you had two, didn't you? You know you had the moral law, then you had the animal sacrifice law. And he said the law having a shadow of good things to come but not the very image of the things. Go ahead and read on. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Now you know what law he's talking about here, don't you? He told you what law he's talking about. Can never with those sacrifices. Go ahead and read on. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because if they could have gotten the job done, then they would not have ceased to be offered. Go ahead and read on. Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Go ahead. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Go ahead and read. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Uh-huh. Wherefore... When he cometh into the world, he said. Who is this he that we are reading about here? This is Jesus. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said. Go ahead and read on. Sacrificing an offering thou wouldest not. Well, you know, what is Paul saying here? He, Paul is saying, 
Wherefore, when Jesus cometh into the world, he said, not moral law thou would if not, right. or high days thou would if not, or dietary law thou would if not, but sacrifices and offering thou would if not. Okay. What did the law say? Then Daniel yes, write that when Jesus be cut off, that he would cause Sacrifices and oblations to cease? Yes, sir. Well, what is Paul saying? Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifices and offering thou would if not. So what David wrote in Psalm when he said that sacrifices and offering thou would if not, he was speaking of a time in the future. And what time was that? When Jesus cometh into the world. That's the time that he was speaking about. So now, what Paul is teaching here, it is right in line with what is written in the prophets. Go ahead, finish that up. But a body has thou prepared me. But a body has thou prepared me because Jesus came to die for the sins of man and he was in the God form. But he had to give that up to take on a flesh and blood body so that he might die for the sins of man. But a body has thou prepared me. Skip down to verse 10. Go ahead and read. By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. In other words, he became the offering. By which now we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Let's go now. To Colossians chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 12. After going through all of that, now you can understand this. See, sometimes you have to understand one thing before you can understand another. And if you don't get that first thing right, you're going to surely mess up the second. Because everybody likes to read this Colossians chapter 2. They like to read, they, they read this all of the time. And when they read it, you know what they said? They said that this is talking about the moral law. When they tell you that Jesus nailed the law to the cross, this is where they're going. Next time one tell you that, just flip over to Colossians. <laughs> and be there waiting on them when they get there. <laughs> Because that's where they're going. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But what did, what did God tell the angel to tell Daniel? That he would call sacrifice. When he, when he be cut off, he would call sacrifices and oblations. And how was he cut off? He was cut off on the cross, right? And Paul agreed with that, didn't he? When he, uh, when he wrote to the Hebrews. Didn't he agree with that? So now. Why should he write anything different to the Colossians? Because he wrote this to the Colossians. Start reading at Colossians chapter 2 and began reading at verse 12. Colossians 2 and 12. Okay, go ahead and read. Buried with him in baptism. Well, he said now, buried with him in baptism. Go ahead and read on. When also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, uh -huh. who have raised him from the dead. Go ahead and read. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, uh -huh. having forgiven you all trespasses. Go ahead. Blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us. Wait, see what he said? Blotting out the handwriting and ordinances that were against you. You know, People, like I said, people read this and they say, see, that's talking about the commandments, the moral law here. <laughs> but how is the commandments against you? You tell me, how is the commandments against you? You know what Jesus said about the commandments? If you want eternal life, keep the commandments. Didn't he say that? Yes, sir. And he told you in, 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 in Matthew chapter 5, if you want to get in the kingdom, keep the commandments. Didn't he say that? Yes, sir. Then he had John to write in the 22nd chapter of Revelation that blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life. So then how is the commandments against you? But Paul told you about the animal sacrifice law. He said the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. If it couldn't take away sin, it couldn't take away death. 
So now, what law is it that was against you? It was the animal sacrifice law that was against you. That is why when Jesus died, they took it out of the way. Go ahead, read on. Which was contrary to us. Which was contrary to us. Go ahead and read on. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. What law did he nail to the cross? The animal sacrifice law. He told you that when Jesus be cut off, he was going to cause the sacrifice and, and the oblations to cease. And he said, well, and Paul wrote, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, sacrifices and offering, thou would have not. That is what Paul taught. You understand yes, what sir. I'm saying? So what he taught is right in line with what the prophets wrote, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 5. I mentioned this. We may as well read some of it. Matthew chapter 5. Pick it up at verse 17. Matthew 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 17. That's what Jesus said. I already know what the preacher said. <laughs> he told you that Jesus came to do away with the law. That's what, ain't that what he told you? Yes, he did. I know he did. God heard him say it too many times. <laughs> that, that Jesus came to do away with the law. Jesus died on the cross. That did away with the moral law. I know that's what he told you. And if he didn't tell you, you'll show up in one of the churches tomorrow. He'll tell you. <laughs> Start reading at verse 17. Now, this is what Jesus said now. Go ahead and read verse 17. Go ahead. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Wait a minute. What Jesus said, don't think that I came to destroy the law. Go ahead and read on. Or the prophets. Or the prophets. Go ahead. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, he said, I, came, I didn't come to destroy. I came to fulfill it. And he didn't come to fulfill it for you either. Go ahead and read on. For verily I say unto you, uh -huh. to heaven and earth pass. Go ahead. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Uh, do, uh, all you, all, you don't need to know but one thing that is do, do you still have a heaven and if you still have do you still have a that's all you need to know that's it if you don't have a heaven and we still don't have a earth, then you know the law is no good no more you standing on the earth and if you go outside and look up the heaven is still there so that means that the law is still good that's go right. ahead and read on verse 19 go ahead Whosoever therefore should break one of these least commandments. Wait, who is whosoever then? Everybody in it. Whosoever shall break one of the least of these commandments. Go ahead and read on. And to teach men so. Or even teach men to do so. Go ahead. He should be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Meaning he won't even be in there. I'm going to show you why I say that. Go ahead and read on. But whosoever should do and teach them. Uh -huh. The same should be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead and read. For I say unto you. That except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of all of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's why I said that. Because if your righteousness don't exceed that right, you will in no case even be in the kingdom. Now, just so you know what law it is that he did not come to destroy. Verse 21. Go ahead and read it. You have heard, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, uh -huh. thou shalt not kill. Whosoever should kill should be in danger of the judgment. Now that's the law that he didn't come to destroy. The moral law, in other words. You don't need to read them all. Let's go to uh, uh, Revelation chapter 22. Pick it up at verse 12. Revelation 22 and verse 12. 22 and 12. Okay. Go ahead and read. Verse 12. 22 and 12. Go ahead. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Now, Jesus said, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. That's when you're going to get your reward when the Lord comes. And he said, I come uh, quickly, and my reward is with me. Go ahead and read on. To give every man according as his work should be. Now, he said, and to give every man according as his work shall be. And you have people tell you, you don't have to do no works. Well, what's going to determine your reward then if you don't have there to do go. no works? Because he said, to give every man as his works shall be. Go ahead and read on. I am Alpha and Omega, uh -huh. the beginning and the end. Go ahead. The first and the last. Go ahead and read. Blessed they that do his commandments, uh -huh. that they may have right to the tree of life. See what he says here? Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life. Finish that verse. And may enter in through the gates into the city. So now, you know, this is a, and what we are reading here, this is after the death of Jesus. You know, because supposedly, 
when he died on the cross, that was supposed to have ended the commandments, right? Well, why do we have it written in the last chapter in the Bible, the last verse almost, blessed are they that do his commandments, That's that right. they may have a right to the tree of life. Start reading here now in Romans chapter 5. Read one verse, verse 9. Romans 5 and 9. Five and nine. Now everybody's guilty of sin. You know, Paul wrote that. He wrote it in the third chapter. He wrote it in the uh, fifth chapter as well. Romans chapter five and pick it up at verse nine. Five and nine. Okay, go ahead and read it. Much more than being now justified by his blood, uh -huh. we shall be saved from wrath through him. So now, what he's saying here to the Romans here, you know, you have been justified by the blood of Jesus. You have been cleared of guilt, in other words, by the blood of Jesus. Everybody is guilty. The only thing that will clear you of that guilt is the blood of Jesus being justified by his blood. Now, back up to the third chapter and pick it up at verse 19, 3 and 19. 3 and 19. Okay. Go ahead and read. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is said to them who are under the law. Now I want you to pay real close attention to what we are reading here. Now we know whatever the things the law said is said to them that are under the law. Go ahead and read. That every mouth may be stopped. That every mouth it said may be stopped. Go ahead and read. And all the world may become guilty before God. That all the world may become guilty before God. Whatever things the law said is said to them that are under the law. That all of the world may become guilty before God. Well then who is under the law? All, all of the, the world. world is under right. the law. Isn't it? Amen. Go ahead and read on. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall no flesh be justified in his sight. See, they'll read this half a verse here, and, see, and they'll tell you that means that you don't have to keep the law. But that ain't what it said, isn't it? No, it said, therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall no flesh be justified in his sight. No, the law does not justify you. The blood of Jesus justifies you. Yes, he told you that in the fifth chapter, didn't he? But they don't read the second half either. Go ahead and read on. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. If you don't have a law, you don't even know what sin is. And but then people tell you the law has been done away with. Well, then we don't even, we can't sin and don't even know what it is. By the law is the knowledge of sin and sin is the transgression of the law. Skip down to verse 23. Go ahead and read. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody is guilty. Go ahead and read on. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And Jesus redeemed us by his blood then, didn't he? Yeah. And, 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 and as he said in the fifth chapter, we are justified by the blood of Jesus. Because that is how he redeemed us by his blood. Being justified freely by his grace. So this blood is grace then. Because it is an unmerited gift. That's what grace is. That's something right. you did not deserve. Something you did not earn. You know, Jesus came and died for our sin. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. Therefore, it is grace. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption or through the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and read on. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Go ahead. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that uh, are past. Uh-huh. Through the forbearance of God. See what it said to declare his righteousness for the forgiveness of sins that are past. Skip down to verse 29. Continue read. Is he the God of the Jews only? Uh-huh. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Everybody's God. Go ahead and read on. Seeing it is one God which should justify the circumcision by faith uh -huh. and the uncircumcision through faith. Now who is the circumcision? That is the Jews. Who is the uncircumcision? That is the Gentiles. Go ahead and read on. Do we, th do we then make void the law through faith? That's the question I wanted to get to. I went through all of that to get to this. <laughs> Because everybody tell you, you know, Jesus came and died, and that did away with the law. You don't have to keep the law anymore. This is what Paul, now this is writing, Paul is writing to the Romans here. He said, do we make void the law through faith? Do we do away with it? Do we cancel it out? Listen to the answer. You heard the question, do we make it void? Listen to the answer. Go ahead and read. God forbid. God forbid. No, in other words. Go ahead and read. Yay, we established Yay, the law. Yay, we established. What got you in trouble in the first place? You broke the law, right? What got you out of trouble? Jesus. What's going to keep you out of trouble? Keeping the law. 
Now this is the writing of Paul here. So did Paul tell you you ain't got to keep the law no more? No, After Jesus died for your sin, he said, no, we established the law. You got a little bit more. Let's go to Romans chapter 6 now and pick it up at verse 1. Romans 6 and we'll begin reading at verse 1. 6 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. What shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now you're under grace. Yeah, okay. He says, shall we continue to transgress the law that grace may abound? Listen to the answer. Go ahead and read. God forbid. God forbid. No, in other words. Go ahead. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Because when you repent and be baptized, that's symbolically of you dying to sin. But if you continue to transgress the law, then you are living in sin. So shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How that we are dead to sin, living any longer therein. Go ahead and read on. Know you not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Uh-huh. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Go ahead. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, uh -huh. even so we also should walk in newness of life. And by the way, when you get baptized, that is what you're saying, that I am going to walk in a newness of life. Where I walk contrary to the law, now I am going to make every effort to walk in the law. Go ahead and read on. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Uh-huh. We should be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Go ahead and read. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, uh -huh. that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. See what I'm saying? That old man. That's what baptism is about. You know, symbolically the death and burial of that old man and the resurrection of a new you, one that will not serve sin. Let's go now. Skip down to uh, verse 12. Okay, go ahead and read. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, uh -huh. that ye shall obey it in the lust thereof. See what he says here, don't let sin reign in your mortal body. You know, you're, you're under grace now. You're under the blood of Jesus now. So now he's telling you, don't uh, uh, let sin reign in your mortal body. And the only way you keep sin from reigning in your mortal body, and that is by keeping the law. So he said, don't let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Go ahead and read on. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Now he said, and don't yield your members as members of unrighteousness unto sin. Go ahead and read. But yield yourselves unto God. Uh huh. As those that are alive from the dead. Go ahead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Go ahead. For sin should not have dominion over you. Uh -huh. For ye are not under the law, now, but this is under the verse grace. they like to read here. Yeah. They love to read this verse here. When, I, when they said Paul's writing, this is it. <laughs> and, 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 and what we read in Colossians and, 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 and uh, one other verse in Galatians. This is it. They think this is telling them that they don't have to keep the command. That's what they, that's what, uh, now I'm going to take that back. They don't really think that. <laughs> that's what they want to think. You so. understand what I'm saying? <laughs> it is convenient. Yes. I can read this to justify not having to keep the law. But that is not what he's telling you. How do I know that's not what he's telling you? Read the next verse. Go ahead and read. 15. Uh-huh. What then? Uh -huh. Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Go ahead. God forbid. Wait a minute. Shall we sin because we are not? What is sin? A transgression of the law, right? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? What did he say? God, God forbid. forbid. Show you where there. And he's going to go on to tell you if you decide you want to transgress the law, you're going to get in trouble. In, in fact, you're going to even die. And he ain't talking about the first death either. Go ahead and read on. Know ye not uh -huh. that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to See whom you said? obey. Know ye not to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey. Go ahead and read on. Whether of sin unto death. Whether of sin unto death. So now he's letting you know, if you're going to transgress the law, this is what you can expect. Death. And he ain't talking about that first death either. Because you're going to die that. I don't care how righteous you are. Okay. 
But he's talking about that second death that you don't have to die. He said, now, whether unto, to whoever you hear your uh, members as servants to obey, that's who servants you are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death, go ahead and read. Or of obedience unto righteousness. Or of obedience unto righteousness. He's going to sum it up. Skip down to verse 23. Go ahead and read. For the wages of sin is death. But the wages of sin is death. Go ahead and read. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he's letting you know if you choose to walk contrary to them commandments, then you're going to die. But they, they, the only thing is they're interested in is verse 14. They ain't interested in reading the rest of it. All you have to do is just keep reading. He That's made right. it very clear. Yes, sir. Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. To whoever you yield yourself servant to obey, that's who servant you are. Whether of sin unto death or uh, obedience unto righteousness. Now, why did he turn around in the seventh chapter and say it real plain? Seven and seven. Go ahead and read. What shall we say then? The same letter, the same Paul to the same Romans. Okay. What shall we say then? Go ahead and read on. Is the law sin? God forbid. Go ahead. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. See what Paul said? I didn't even know what sin was, but by the law. Go ahead and read on. For I have not known lust, except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. Where did it say that at? In the 10, didn't it? Skip down. Read verse 12. Go ahead and read. Wherefore the law is holy. Now he said the law is holy. Go ahead and read. And the commandment holy and just and good. And the commandment is holy and it is just and it is. They never read that. I've never heard one read that. But he, Paul now he is telling you that the law is holy and the commandment is holy and it is just and it is. That's what Paul taught. And he got some other scripture that he taught regarding the law as well. He said the law was not made for a righteous man, but for a sinner. You know, he got a lot of stuff that he told you about the law, besides what we read here in the seventh chapter, and besides what we read in the third chapter. Shall we sin then, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to pick it up at verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 15. And we'll begin reading at verse 20. 15 and 20. Okay, go ahead and read. But now is Christ risen from the dead uh -huh. and become the first fruits of them that slept. Now he says Jesus rose from the dead and he's the first fruits of them that slept. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians. He's dealing with the resurrection. Go ahead and read. For since by man came death, mm. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Now he said by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Go ahead and read on. For as in Adam all die, mm. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now he, he, he said in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now he's talking about the resurrection of the dead. And no, yes, notice he didn't say, you know, the... the uh, uh, those that died in Christ, they went on to heaven somewhere. He didn't say that, did he? No, you know, he's talking about the dead being raised up. And he's going to even tell you at what time they will be raised. Go ahead and read on. But every man in his own order. Go ahead. Christ the first fruit. Uh -huh. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. So now what is he saying to the people? He's saying to the people that the dead, you know, they are dead. And they go underground. And they're going to be in there until the time of the resurrection. Right. And at what time that's going to happen? At the coming of the Lord. Skip down now to uh, verse 35. Go ahead and read. But some man would say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? And then he turned around and asked the question. Somebody will say how the dead raise up. And with what body do they come? Skip down to uh, verse 42. Go ahead and read on. 
So also is the resurrection of the dead. Uh huh. It is sown in corruption. Go ahead. It is raised in incorruption. Now it says, go on the ground, a corruptible body, and it comes up an incorruptible body. Go ahead and read on. It is sown in dishonor. Uh huh. And is raised in glory. Go ahead. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. In other words, it go on the ground one kind of body and come up another kind. Go ahead and read on. It is sown a natural body. Uh huh. It is raised a spiritual body. Go ahead and read. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Go ahead. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Uh -huh. The last, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Now, all this means something, but we're not really dealing so much with the resurrection today. Go ahead and read on. How be it, that was not first which is spiritual, uh -huh. but that which is natural, Go ahead. and afterward that which is spiritual. Uh -huh. The first man is of the earth, earthy. Go ahead. The second man is... Is the Lord from heaven. So now, you know, he's, he's saying uh, to the people here, you know, the body, uh, uh, one kind of body go in the ground. And then when it is raised, it is raised another kind of body. Go ahead and read on. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthy. Uh -huh. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Go ahead and read. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Go ahead. Now this I say, brethren. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. He's just letting you know, you know, as, as flesh and blood beings will not get into the kingdom. They are going to have to get a change of body from a natural body to a spiritual body. Go ahead and read on. Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh -huh. We should not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh -huh. at the last trump. Go ahead. For the trumpet should sound, and the dead should be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Now all he's saying here is, is that, you know, the dead going to be raised, the righteous dead. They will be raised with an immortal body. And the righteous living, their bodies will be changed into an immortal body at the coming of the Lord. Go ahead and read on. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Uh -huh. And this mortal must put on immortality. See what I say? It, this corruption must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. You know, immortality, that means that you can't die. So now he said this mortal body, it will become immortal. Go ahead and read on. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. Now what is all this stuff going to happen? At the coming of the Lord, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's what time we are reading about here. Because he told you the dead will be raised at the coming of the Lord. Now, he said, and, and so then, when this corruptible put on incorruption, go ahead and read on. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. And this mortal body becomes an immortal body. Go ahead and read. There should be brought to pass the saying that is written. Notice what he says here. Then will be brought to pass the saying that is written. We're going to find out where it's written at. Go ahead and read on. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up. In victory. Let's go and find out where it's written. Because Paul told you what he taught. He taught out of the Old Testament. Right. Let's go now to uh, Isaiah 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse 22. You got just a little bit more. You're almost out of here. In fact, you got three scriptures. Isaiah 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse 22. He said it is brought. Wherefore, he said it's brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. I want to read some of this 24th because it's really written in the 25th chapter, but I want to read some of this uh, 24th chapter first so you will clearly understand what time we are dealing with here. You know, you just overlook these chapters because uh, man separated it into chapters. You know, a lot of people, they get lost. They go into one chapter, and then when they go into another chapter, they think they're dealing with something entirely different. And, and sometimes that may be the case, and sometimes it's not. Let's start reading here at Isaiah 24, and begin reading at verse 22. Go ahead and read. And they should be gathered together. As prisoners are gathered in the pit, uh -huh. and should be shut up in the prison. Go ahead. And after many days shall they be visited. Uh -huh. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun is shamed, and the Lord of hosts shall reign in, in Mount Zion. Now when is the Lord of hosts going to reign in Mount Zion? And it's coming, isn't it? Go ahead and read. And in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And before his angels gloriously. Now, you know, that's when the Lord is going to reign in Mount Zion at his coming. So what you're dealing with really is something that's going to happen at the coming of the Lord. Now, go on in the verse of uh, chapter 25 and pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead and read. 
And then this bound shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things. Uh huh. A feast of wines on the leaves. Go ahead. A fat, th a fat things full of marrow and wines on the leaves well refined. Now, I just want to remind you of what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death swallowed up in victory. And he said that was going to happen at the coming of the Lord, yes, didn't sir. Now, we're reading in the prophets and we're reading about a time at the coming of the Lord. Go ahead and read on, brother. And he would destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. And he said he's going to destroy in this mountain the face of the covering that have been cast over all people. Go ahead and read on. And the veil that is spread over all nations. And that is a deception that have been put up on the earth. Because the book said the devil deceived the whole world. And when the Lord come, he's going to destroy that veil that's been put over all people. Go ahead and read on. Verse 8. Go ahead and read. He will swallow up death in victory. And he will swallow up death in victory. That is where Paul got this from. You understand what I'm saying? But when did he say that was going to happen? At the coming of the Lord. That's right. When this mortal put on it mortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so where did Paul get this stuff from out of the law and out of the prophets go ahead and 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 and, and read that rest of that verse go ahead and the Lord God will wipe, wipe away tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all from off all the earth. Go ahead. For the Lord has spoken it. Go ahead and read. And it should be said in that day. And it will be said in that day. Go ahead and read. Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And it will be said, Lo, this is our God, and we have waited for him. Go ahead and read on. And he will save us. Uh-huh. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Go ahead. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is talking about the coming of the Lord here. Yes, sir. But Paul quoted this, didn't he? He said, Then shall be to, uh, 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 come to pass the saying that is written, Death swallowed up in victory. Let's go one other place. Let's go to Second Peter chapter Three, and we're gonna pick it up at verse fifteen. Second Peter chapter three, and we're gonna pick it up at being, at verse fifteen. This is the problem right here. This is why they can't get Paul's writing right. Start reading at verse fifteen. Second Peter chapter three, verse fifteen. Go ahead and read. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Uh -huh. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. Now he said, and he said, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul has written unto you, according to the wisdom given unto him, has he written unto you. Go ahead and read on. As also in all his epistles. As also in all of his epistles. Go ahead and read on. Speaking of them of these things. Uh huh. In which are some things hard to be understood. Speaking of, of them of some things in which are some things are hard to be understood. You got novices trying to deal with Paul's writing. You understand what I'm saying? You got a man that don't even have the basic stuff right yet. Going to try to teach you out of the writings of Paul. That's a mistake. How you going to get a guy that don't even know what day the Sabbath day is and you going to let him teach you out of the writings of Paul? I don't even, that they still think that when you die, you go to heaven. And you going to allow him to teach you out of the writings of Paul. No, out of all the writers in the Bible, this is the only one that I've ever seen anything said like this about. Of which things are some that are hard to be understood. Go ahead and read on. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. That they that are unlearned and unstable, they will twist. That's what rest means, to twist. They, and, and they are unlearned. You say, oh no, my preacher, he been a preacher for 40 years. He is unlearned. <laughs> but he went to the seminary he is unlearned <laughs> the only thing he got out of the seminary was the doctrine of that particular denomination That's right. and that particular denomination have it all wrong 
That is why they tell you that when you die, you go into heaven. Or that the first day is the Sabbath day. Or that Jesus nailed the moral law to the cross. So they are unlearned. So he's so the Lord had Peter to tell you that, you know, Paul's writing is hard to be understood. And, and, and those that are unlearned, they would twist his writing. Go ahead and read on. As they do also the other scriptures uh -huh. unto their own destruction. As they do to other scripture, it said, but to their own destruction. So they all mess it up, don't they? But as we can see, you know, what Paul taught is what is written in the law and in the prophets. But you just got unlearned people trying to teach you out of the rise of Paul, so they twist it and they mess it up. But I think, I hope now, rather, that you have a better understanding of the rise of Paul. Thank you.